You will hear a telephone conversation between a customer and a telephone service representative. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. Hello, Chief Calls Unlimited. This is Adam O'Shaughnessy. How can I help you? Yes, I heard something on the TV the other day about cheap local and national calls. Do you have a new offer available at the moment? That's right. You would have heard about our special no-limit offer. Oh, how does it work? How can I save? Well, do you make many calls outside your local area? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, I do. I often call my mother-in-law in Sydney, and sometimes I call Perth and Melbourne. We've got family there. Okay. Where would you be calling from? Brisbane. Right. This would be perfect for you. How it works is you tell us which city you call the most, and we'll set up a special offer for three cents per minute, no matter what time of the day you call. But it gets better. We also offer ten-cent local calls. No other telephone carrier can offer you such a cheap plan. Wow. That is cheaper than what I currently pay. But what about international calls? I often call America. What are your rates to the States? Our rates to the USA are also competitive. You can call America for six cents per minute. This also includes a connection fee of 15 cents. That's competitive, all right. So, how do I sign up? Well, we can do it right here over the phone if you like. Or I can send you out an application form. Or I can email the details with a form attached. Which would you prefer? Well, how long will it take over the phone? Oh, just a matter of four or five minutes. Okay, let's do it now. Right then. First off, I need your name and address. Okay, my name is Mandy Silverstone. That's S-I-L-V-E-R-S-T-O-N-E. -E. My address is 16 Hazelwood Street. That's H-A-Z-L-E-W-O-O-D Street, Belmont, 4173. Good. Now, what about your telephone number, date of birth, and do you have an email address? Yes. The telephone is 5522-3481. My date of birth is July 13th, 1972, and my email address is mandy at telly.com. That's M-A-N-D-Y at T-E-L-E dot -E com. Why do you need my date of birth? Before you listen to the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 7 to 10. Right, OK. Yes, we'll request your date of birth for security reasons. We'll ask you this each time you call us to request information about your account. Not for making a payment, but, uh, you know, if you wish to change any of your details or change your plan, you know, those kind of things. OK, I understand. OK, right. Well, we're finished. Do you have any other questions at all? Yes. When does this new service actually start? Yes, I'm going to send the information to our sales department. They'll process it today and your new service will be ready tomorrow. By next month, you'll really start to experience the savings. Fantastic. Okay, well, that's all I wanted to know. Oh, when will I receive the bill? That'll be one month from the day you signed up. It'll be sent on the same day every month thereafter, unless you request a change. We can send them every two or three months if you prefer. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. Everyone knows that we have achieved a huge amount in terms of space exploration. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. Everyone knows that we have achieved a huge amount in terms of space exploration. 
The space race between ourselves and Russia went on for nearly 20 years, but we were the first to land a man on the moon. At that time, the space race was very close, and the Russians very nearly got to the moon before us. For me, the most exciting invention, and the invention that really showed we were ahead in the space race, was the reusable space shuttle. It was first successful in 1981, and has since been used on many missions. The reusable shuttle can carry astronauts on space missions and can serve as a laboratory in which to conduct experiments. It can be used to transport equipment to space stations or to collect or repair satellites. The shuttle carries between five and seven crew members. When a mission is complete, the shuttle fires thrusters, which propel it back into the Earth's atmosphere. It then glides down to make its landing. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. Although the remains of very early ovens have been found in many parts of the world, it was here that they were first used frequently in people's homes. In ancient Greece and in other parts of Europe and Turkey, people used ovens to bake bread. But it seems there was only one large oven that everyone shared. Here the remains of villages from 5,000 years ago show that each mud brick house was constructed with an oven and that baking bread and perhaps cooking meat was very common. The ovens were made of clay and shaped like a beehive. Inside they had shelves, so that a number of loaves could be cooked together, and an opening at the bottom from which ash could be removed. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation between two people who are about to share a project at work. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Hi, Bill. How are you? I'm okay now, Sarah. But I was so ill last week. Oh, dear. What was the problem? Did you eat that dodgy fish in the canteen? No. At first, I thought it was a cold. But then my head started hurting and my eyes started to go blurry. Oh, I'm so sorry. That sounds serious. Yeah, it's okay, actually. I went to the doctor and he diagnosed me with a migraine. He gave me some medicine, and I'm starting to feel much better. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Well, I'm also glad you're in today, because we have to work on a new project together. Oh, are we in the same section? No, it's just us. No one else. Mr Donaldson put us down as B-team because we live near each other. That could be fun. What do we have to do? Well, the project is partly internet research, then checking reference books for information to prepare a survey, which we have to use with people we know. Great! What's the topic? It's to do with shopping over the last 10 years. We have to find out how customers have changed their behaviour. OK, so what's the first step? I think the first thing to do is to check the list of references he gave me. But my computer is in for repair, so if I check in the reference library, would you be willing to look up some references online? Once we're done with the reference checks, we can write the questions together. That's fine. I'll do the internet research. So what sort of shopping are we looking at? Only food or goods or clothes shopping. We have to find people who are willing to tell us about personal things, like deodorants, cosmetics, soap or vitamin creams. The other groups are doing food, electrical goods and clothes. That won't be so easy, Sarah. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30.
Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. People might think those things are a bit private. Yes, I thought about that. I'll ask the women and you can ask the men. That should work OK. Well, if you think so. Give me the list of references then. Sorry, I left them in my other bag at Joseph's house. I'll get them for you tomorrow. OK. Well then, this afternoon, I think I'll catch up on the notes from last week. Can you help me or are you busy? I've made you a copy of my notes already to save you time. Here you are. Wow, thanks, Sarah. That's so thoughtful. Well, since there's nothing for us to do right now, shall we go for lunch? Well, actually, I'll have to catch you later. I have to go to a meeting this afternoon. Can I phone you tonight to arrange when to meet? No, sorry. I have a date. Can we meet in the laboratory for the first class tomorrow? I'm not sure, because I have to go to the library to collect some books. What about meeting there at lunchtime? Do you mean in the lab? Yes. OK. See you in the laboratory tomorrow at noon, then. Sounds like we have a lot of work to do. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a talk on bullying in the workplace given by a university lecturer to a group of students. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good morning. My name is Dr. Mervyn Forrest, and I specialize in management techniques and training. I've been invited here today to talk to you about the cost to the economy of bad management. And what I would like to dwell on first is an area that has recently been exercising everyone, and that is coercion in the workplace, or to put it more simply, bullying. It has been estimated that bullying at work costs the British economy up to £4 billion a year in lost working time and in legal fees. And with the problem apparently on the increase, it is time that managers took on board what is happening. I would like to think that what is perceived as bullying is nothing more than lack of experience, insecurity, or lack of awareness on the part of managers, and not a conscious effort to attack someone. But that is perhaps a case of, um, of my being naive or over-hopeful. Before we break up into groups to look at the first task on the handout you've got, I'd like to give you a start with some of the main bullying methods that have been identified so far. Basically, what I'm going to do here is to give you examples of one or two points. Uh, can you all read the OHP clearly? Yes? Right, off we go. The first item on the list is giving people tasks which managers themselves cannot do and which are therefore impossible to achieve. This is, in fact, a very common strategy used by managers to manage their subordinates. It gives certain people a false sense of security as they watch others failing while they try to achieve the goals set. Another simple bullying technique is constantly moving the goalposts, especially when one's employees are in the middle of a task. This is not bad management, it is just plain stupid. All targets and goals set should be easily achieved within a realistic timescale. Sending memos to someone else criticizing the performance of a task where the individual has no way of replying is another common technique, especially when the manager concerned does not reply or makes it impossible for subordinates to contact him or her by not answering the telephone or not replying to emails. This is not the style of a sound manager, but rather the antics of someone with emotional problems. If you behave like that, don't expect your staff to respect you. And now, the technological bully. It is interesting how all tools designed to help can be turned into dangerous weapons. The urgent email bully is fast becoming a problem in the office. 
employees turn on their computers to be faced with a string of badly worded emails, making instant and often unrealistic demands, which reveal the hysteria mode of management. Have you ever felt a sense of dread before looking at your email, even your personal messages? All companies should develop a company strategy whereby there is an email code of practice, with offensive messages being forwarded to a designated person for appropriate action. I would now like you to break up into groups and brainstorm other bullying techniques which you think you may have experienced, and perhaps, if you're honest, which you have been party to. I can think of at least nine more bullying strategies. I would also like you to consider ways in which you think that each of the techniques on your list can be countered. Is everyone clear as to what the task is? Yes? Okay. You've got 20 minutes to do this. Thanks for watching. Here are other true videos. You can watch them as well. And if you haven't yet subscribed my channel, please subscribe it and hit the bell icon for my upcoming videos and share these all videos among your friends.